Hi, everyone. Sean Paul Ellis here from the Saturday Morning Cartoons podcast with your weekly pre-show announcements. It's towards the end of January 2020. How are you guys doing with your resolutions? My resolution? Continue to knock it out of the park with these pre-show announcements, which include today a shout out, a Patreon request, and what is actually happening on today's episode. Our shout out comes from an iTunes review that we received where we got one star. And this is from MO213. And this was back in November of 2019. So very recent. It's titled Disappointed. I tried to like this podcast, but after slogging through two hours of them crapping on cartoon classics, I just couldn't continue. I get it. You're above simply enjoying a cartoon, but you don't have to try and wreck it for everyone else. There are some things in life that don't need to be analyzed to death. And I've since realized that two people spending over an hour analyzing a 25-minute children's cartoon is definitely not something the world needs. This review was devastating to us. I'm just kidding. This was not devastating at all. In fact, we actually really appreciate it, M.O., so thank you for reviewing us. Look, this person didn't like the show. We still appreciate them listening to the two hours of podcast that we put out. This person gave us a one-star review. If you disagree, go and give us a rating. We love reviews, and the bad ones are still good, so thank you, M.O. We honestly really do appreciate it. And also, what you described is exactly how this show works. As a reminder, we are a podcast that reviews cartoons, and sometimes we are not nice about it because we are very critical, opinionated people. It's just how this functions. It's fine. Again, thank you so much. And if you disagree with Emma, you can always go and rate and review us on Apple iTunes. A quick ask. We have a Patreon. I know it is way past the holiday season right now. You forgot to get us a gift. Don't worry about it. You can still support this show and our original content. You like the show. We like the show. We also all like ad-free stuff. So consider being a patron. You can send as little as a dollar a month or as much Marvel money as you can spare. We're happy either way. John Favreau, we know you're listening. Just send us some Marvel money. It's totally cool. If you don't want to support us, that's fine. We hope you enjoyed the show. If you do want to support us, awesome. Thank you. We really appreciate that from the bottom of our heart. You can find links in the bio of all of our social media sites, or you can just search Saturday Morning Cartoons on Patreon. Just remember, that's morning with you. So what's on today's episode? As we have been chatting about this, every January is New Year's Nicktoons. I'm not going to lie. We're in strange territory with Cat Scratch. We didn't watch this. I didn't even know that this show existed. As I say this out loud, ask yourself the question, did you know that Cat Scratch existed? A lot of smart and talented people worked on and created this show. I feel like nobody is aware of this Nicktoon. So, is it good? Does it hold up? Do you even remember this show? All of this and more. So now, on with the show. Hello and welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the Collider Weekly podcast for all things animation, including news, reviews, and interviews, coming to you from a giant mansion filled with cats that I was bequeathed in a will. I'll be your co-host, Sean Paul Ellis, and joining me from the Scottish Highlands, welcome my co-host, Dave Trumbord. David, 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 how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, but I love that you made it seem like I was somewhere like exotic and foreign but it's just the name of my litter box it's really (laughs) just the scottish highlands scottish highlands is the name of my litter box i like that that actually seems pretty nice doesn't that seem kind of nice i feel like more people should name their cats litter boxes what would you name yours if you had one and if you liked Uh, cats uh i would uh i'd name it uh pandora after Mm. uh the the movie avatar uh and not the cartoon avatar the movie avatar (laughs) Because both of them are filled with crap. <laughs> yeah, not the cartoon, again, just to, just yeah, to again, clarify. Again, absolutely not Avatar The Last Airbender. That should be a textbook example shown to every animator or any storyteller that ever wants to work anywhere ever. James Cameron's Avatar is the name of my litter box. Now, I thought you were going back to like, what was she, like a Greek myth Pandora, where the only thing left at the end of the day was hope. <laughs> in the bottom of the litter box and i was like that's weird that's yeah. a weird thing to leave behind in your litter box but if, nope. i guess you take all the concentrated evil out and you're yeah. left with hope or just maybe the the pandora jewelry the those awful bracelets yeah, the yeah, charm bracelets the that box. they give to people yeah Directly. it's like if you 
If you'd like to give somebody a nice but also sometimes thoughtless gift, Pandora Jewelry. Guess who we're not sponsored by this week? Not Pandora. Again, Pandora Jewelry. <laughs> Again, we are also not sponsored by them once more. <laughs> Uh, one day we're going to get there, gang, but that day is not today. That's okay. If you have any doubt as to what cartoon we are talking about today, I don't even know how to begin <laughs> no, there's or approach no way that conversation. Knows what we're talking about. Don't worry about it. I don't it. care if you read the title. You have no yeah. clue what we're talking about based on that. Oh, gang. We, we're in January. We have talked about one Nickelodeon Nicktoon. Every January, we do New Year's Nicktoons. And... Like every other year, we are at a point where we're we're doing our. This is our second installment this month. Yeah. You know, we we've done Avatar: The Last Airbender, arguably maybe the best cartoon that we've ever watched on this show. Had an interview last week. We're picking it back up now with Cat Scratch, Nickelodeon's Cat Scratch as a Nicktoon, and this has been challenging because for the last couple of years, as we've been talking about some of these newer Nicktoons, more contemporary Nicktoons. Uh, Dave and I don't really have the context for this. We didn't watch these. These weren't sort of the, the early 90s Nicktoons that you know and love. These are something different. These are, are interesting, but they're still under the Nickelodeon umbrella, and we want to get into them. We want to understand if these were fun, and we'd also love to hear if you have any notable memories or, or uh, feelings from watching this when you were a kid or even when you're an adult. So if you liked and you watched Cat Scratch, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. That aside... Dave, I have to approach this and ask the question, are you a cat person? I'm uh, an animal person. Like, I'm more of a dog person than a cat person than literally anything else. Bird, lizard, rodent, snake, whatever. But, yeah, definitely. I mean, I've got, you know, blind cat running around the house. You can probably hear him on occasion in the background of these shows. Uh, (laughs) But, yeah, yeah, cat person. I don't know about when it comes to this cartoon, but I'm a cat person in, like, normal life. I know you're not, though. I, I... I'm not not a cat person. Okay. I I had a cat when I was growing up, mm-hmm. uh, when I was very young, like I think maybe like seven years old, yeah. seven, eight. Uh, the cat scratched me across, like from the top of my head all the way down uh, at some point. And, and then you my not mom... only became like a post-apocalyptic warrior, <laughs> just wandering out with a scar, but you also created the show Cat Scratch. Amazing. Yeah. It's just me in a Fury Road makeup looking like I'm, like I'm crazed, uh, but an eight-year-old. Uh, I, me. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's so cute and adorable. It's so Glad cute. somebody's finally paying attention to me. Yeah. I enjoy cats. I like cats. I have not had a cat since I was that eight years old. And after that incident with the cat, my mom brought the cat to a quote unquote farm. And mm. I don't really ever know what happened to our. Uh, it probably came to my house, if we're being honest, because I had. Uh, so I lived in, in two houses growing up. My mom's and my dad's were split. And in one house, we had five cats. And the other house, I think we only had one when I was growing up. Um, but also in the house with five cats, I had five dogs. So it's kind oh. of like basically grew up in a domestic zoo. Uh, a yin and yang of animals. Yeah, exactly. But the cats, you know, the cats stayed upstairs, the dogs stayed downstairs. And I, you know, got along well with, with both species, I guess. So I don't know. <laughs> Uh, just an animal person more than anything. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you, if you heard me almost trying to understand or remember the the type of cat that I had, I think mm. it was a I think it was like a, a calico. Yeah. But I, I I almost contend that there's really only three types of cats that exist <laughs> okay. in the world. It's it they're either kittens, they're internet famous, or it's a chubby cat that's on a diet. And I feel like every time I meet a friend's cat, they're like, eh, it's on a it's on a diet. Yeah. Like, Is it though? Is yeah. it? Really? There's some Venn diagram crossover with all three of those, I think. But yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. Ooh, Texas what's a, what's a, what's in the a, center? What's in the center of the Venn diagram? It's a chubby kitten who's internet famous for being a chubby kitten on a diet. Oh, that's kind of cute. Yeah, isn't it though? <laughs> Not really. Texas on a diet though. <laughs> really? Texas on a diet to keep him at a quote unquote healthy weight, which is okay. weirdly equivalent to however much money I need to spend at the vets which changes all the time. They're like, oh, no, you need to, to, to keep him at this weight. You need to spend this much money. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. Huh. And it's weird that it goes up every time. But uh, he also has, Gonna... like, he has, like, no teeth left. So they had to put him on kind of uh, on softer foods and stuff, which, again, surprise, costs more than your regular crap. So, yeah, cats. It also, don't like go you're... see cats. Yeah, <laughs> also, yeah, the the, do Ooh, not go see the movie cats. Don't, Oof, cats. don't do that. You jealous uh, also... crazies. <laughs> it also sounds like... Uh, you know, we, it also sounds like you're in a pyramid scheme, like a Nutrisystem for cats through your vet 
and they are just making money hand over fist they with you, Dave. They don't really like me because I argue with them every time. That I'm like, you don't need to pull every tooth and put like a, a platinum tipped new a, acrylic tooth back into the cat for like $15,000 a piece. Like you don't need to do that. I know I'm Jesus. not a vet, but I'm pretty sure you don't have to do that. So they don't, they don't 100% like me when I come in there because I uh. refuse to pay for stupid shit. <laughs> I like it. the idea. I like the idea too of you just going like not going in there. Like you just drop your cat Texas off the vet, and you're like, "I'll be back in an hour." Like, sometimes, please, please fix yourself. Sometimes, it's true. Sometimes? There was actually okay. one instance where I worked about an hour away, and I had to drop him off, and he had to undergo this dental stuff. And then they called me at like two, and we're like, "He's freaking out. He's coming out of the anesthesia or whatever. He's freaking out. We don't know what to do." I'm like, "You don't know what to do. Your vets." You literally out. paid to know what to do. What would you like me to do? Yeah, the bets. Now you're a vet. Now I'm go a vet. In, I'm go in, go in, update vet. LinkedIn, amateur, Send amateur, all your home vet, vet questions to Sean Paul Ellis on Twitter and Instagram. Perfect. Can't wait for all of them. Man, oh man, we are getting a little off topic, which is exactly, which is exactly where we want to be for this show, yes. given how irrelevant. Uh, it is in terms of uh, how much it jumps around. Yep. But if you were curious and you said, hey, I want to know a little bit more about Cat Scratch and what it actually entails, we're going to turn this over to a longtime friend and listener of the show, Bobby Anthem, to give you a synopsis of Cat Scratch. So, Bobby, take it away. When their owner passes away, three cats who are brothers that don't resemble each other inherit a large fortune along with a giant mansion and a very sarcastic butler named Hovis. In today's episode, Blick's fascination with a new female feline in town drives him and his brothers to follow her into the woods to fight a scary monster. Then, Waffle discovers a hidden passage to a secret world where he gets to be king. Perfect, Bobby. Thank you so much. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess maybe given our opinion on how we feel maybe about this cartoon and sort of getting into this, uh, I want Bobby to be a Nicktoon, but I don't want him to be on Cat Scratch. Does that make sense? I, I mean, like anything, he would have made it better. I was trying to think, could he make the movie Cats better, though? I don't want to subject him to that. I don't want to put Bobby in the movie Cats. I don't want Bobby. Down, I don't want period. poor Bobby's face floating in an approximate cat creature general region of where their face is the floating cat faces oh, and god. god knows what else goes on in that movie i bobby I don't do it if you get the call for the sequel say no <laughs> cats turn two. it down cats too oh man oh the well, hopefully... choice turn it down well it sounds like uh based on the success of current cats i feel like cats 2 is not gonna happen Probably in any way shape or form yeah. there's a better chance of cat scratch coming back i think <laughs> than cats 2 being greenlit but who knows stranger things oh man well we are going to get into our discussion of cat scratch uh just as a reminder or if you are a first-time listener we are going to talk about the good the bad and the ugly no we're not actually bad it's not really a spaghetti western we're going to talk about the good what we really liked about this cartoon we're going to talk about the bad some of the things that didn't resonate some of the things that we really didn't like about this particular show and then finally we're going to talk about the lol so instead of the ugly we're going to talk about the things that made us laugh whether it was intentional or unintentional for cat scratch knowing full well that uh you know, a lot of people spent a lot of time making this cartoon, and there's a lot of talented people who are included in this project, and we don't want to crap on them in any way, shape, or form. Uh, we just want to talk about sort of our experience and perspective as we normally do on this show after watching only one single episode the, of this cartoon. But it's the best rated episode somehow, question mark, don't understand it. <laughs> Sure, sure is, Dave. That's what's so confusing. And for a little bit of background on this one, we, Sean and I, because we grew up, you know, 80s, 90s, we just assumed that when we stopped watching Nicktoons that there were no more Nicktoons to be had. Turns out we were wrong. Uh, this current Nicktoon that we're talking about today, it only ran for about 20 episodes. Uh, each episode had two segments, but it ran from 2005 to 2007, which means we've got like 15 more years worth of Nicktoons to cover that I'm not aware even of what they are. I, oh, were you even aware of this one? I had no idea that this, this cartoon even existed. Nope. I've never heard of it. This was something new when I saw some of the, the imagery for it. I, I questioned what we were watching, but it also kind of felt sort of familiar 
in a sense. It, it did, I think, for good and bad reasons. Um, as we get into our discussion here, can we start with kind of like a higher level, just kind of general overall, good, bad, yeah. and ugly maybe, or good, yeah, bad, and please. LOL? Yeah, what, what worked high level for you in terms of the good? Well, like you mentioned, we don't like to, you know, poke fun or, well, we do like to poke fun, but we don't like to, you know, ugly, uglify these things. Uh, we'd like to find the good in everything, even if some stuff is unintentional that makes us laugh. But for the good, the creative team behind the scenes. Like, this seemed right. like with the people involved, the creator, the directors and producers, the cast, it seemed like it was going to be a good quality <laughs> production. I'm already laughing. So this comes from creator Doug Tennaple, who I wouldn't have recognized his name if you told me. I would have. I have, would have had no idea. But apparently, I would have shrugged. Yeah, I shrugged. But apparently, the creator of Earthworm Jim, which I loved the video games, and I remember enjoying the cartoon. I don't think we've have we covered that. We haven't talked about Earthworm Jim. I don't think we talked about Earthworm Jim, but I love the video games for their like weird irreverent humor. It was very kind of out there and spacey and kind of fantastical and just bizarre man i mean if you're not aware of the synopsis of that cartoon it was like a giant sentient earthworm in a powered suit so that he could just walk around and be like a superhero with a ray gun i don't remember right. much more than that but that's pretty much all you need to know all i remember from the video game is that the water level was incredibly frustrating for and me. i loved the one called lorenzen soil where you just had like a mining gun and you just like blasted your way through soil and just like crawled up to find your way to the surface i love yeah. that level i don't know yeah. why it just sticks with me so anyway, from the creator of Earthworm Jim. So okay, there's some pedigree there. Uh, also, as I was scouring through the, the uh, cast of credits, the co-executive producer was a fellow by the name of Peter Hastings, who mm -hmm. I actually have had a chance to talk to because he was a co-creator EP of the Captain Underpants series from DreamWorks that's on Netflix. So I had a chance to talk to him about that. Uh, this episode that we watched today also featured uh, director Mike Gerard. Now, Mike Gerard has decades worth of animation experience as well uh, ranging from everything of like the, the simpsons movies to just a ton of recognizable um other cartoon shows and cartoon series so a ton of people behind the scenes who knew what they were doing <laughs> had made good stuff before and are obviously talented and in the cast we've also got uh recognizable names like wayne knight kevin mcdonald who you probably know more of his characters than you do his name uh, rob paulson who you should definitely know as cartoon royalty Hinden Welch, and uh, Maurice LaMarche. So these are all names we've talked about before. More people who've been in the industry for decades, and they know what they're doing. They're still active today. And yet, that's all the good I got for the general stuff. How about you? Yeah. Bro? Well, no, I mean, I, I want to uh, uh, go back and talk about the cast and the voice actors yeah, that we yeah. have. You know, Robert Paulson, we've talked about him extensively. Uh, he's in everything. Right. He's in just about everything. Wayne Knight, if that sounds really familiar to you, he's Newman from Seinfeld or Dennis Nedry from Jurassic Park. Uh, so awesome to see him in there. Unbelievable, you know, distinct voice in terms of how he, he acts. Kevin McDonald from Kids in the Hall. I loved the Canadian sketch show Kids in the Hall. So to hear him in this, super fun. I think all three of these uh, just great voice actors that you have included in this cartoon, uh, very interesting to kind of see... Uh, all of that put together. Yeah. For me, I enjoyed the design. And I, I want to say I enjoyed the design of this because I've never seen anything like this. This challenged my <laughs> preconceived notion of what I think cats look like in general. Because in the description, this talks about three cats that are brothers who don't resemble each other at all. And I question whether or not they actually resemble cats in any way, shape, or form, which was interesting to me. Uh, so I've, I've never seen anything like this character design. And I, I thought in terms of imagination for the episode that we watched tonight, just holistically, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was, uh, it was a little childish in nature, but again, we're not the target audience for right. that. So respect there. But at the same time, it was interesting and there were some creative things. Uh, this show was also, for some reason, very weird, which I personally am a very weird human, so sure. respect and can relate. And this is also sort of really horny at times. A little bit. It borders bit. between horny and just outright creepy, I think, but yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I had never really kind of seen the confluence of all these different pieces kind of put together in a cartoon show. And so for me, I was like, huh, this is interesting. It's funny that your good crossed over with one of my bads. So are we are we good to go bad? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get bad. The animation, like I I agree with you that I've never seen cat characters drawn quite like this before. 
but much like I've never seen, you know, like a human being t- turned into a pile of ash in front of my <laughs> eyes, uh, I did not enjoy this. Yeah. <laughs> it's just kind of like, oh, that's a new thing that I hate. I really hated these. Um, one looks like a shadow demon. Yep. Uh, another one looks like a straight up ugly doll ripoff. Talk about Gordon. Uh, another one just looks like a, a sock puppet that a kid tried to make look like a rat. There's yeah. no, it's not good. It's really yeah. not good. <laughs> I get that it's... they're kind of oversimplified for animation sake. And it's sure. definitely got a style all its own. I really didn't like it. Yeah, I just, it was, I thought that it was increasingly interesting because I have never seen cats animated or designed in this fashion. And so for me, you know, uh, I don't even think necessarily I needed to think that they were cats. I mean, I know that they keep making feline puns or they keep talking about cats in a sense. I, there were moments where I was like, they're just weird little creatures. I've never seen cats done the way that cats the movie did it either. That doesn't <laughs> for me it doesn't make it good. It's terrifying. It's just bad. God. We we really rounded out twenty nineteen in the beginning of twenty twenty yeah, with just a did. very anti cat. Just bad cats just in general game. And I love cats in general, like we talked about before. But this particular thing is a bad. And so is cats the movie. Uh <laughs> any other any other bads? Because I got one more for this one. Uh, I, I just I think in terms of you know uh, a cohesive story, mm-hmm. I don't really think that there was a larger overarching plot or story for this. It seemed like all of these were kind of non sequiturs. Sure. In fact, it seemed like the most story that you were going to get was in the theme song in general, uh, which I think is I think is both good and bad because obviously you want there to maybe be some character development, some some interesting stuff, but at the same time, I, I think really this was just meant to be sort of a non sequitur every episode kind of weird slapstick, horny, zany adventure (laughs) that these cats were supposed to get into. And I think in some cases that's fine. I don't think it, you know, I don't think it was super offensive. I'm going to, I'm going to counter my own point by saying, I love when you do this. I do the same thing. If the most narrative uh, uh, arc that you're going to get is in the 32nd theme song that you get, I don't know. I guess maybe I was thinking there was going to be more, you know, and it's very hard because the precedent for what we have for Nicktoons is steep. I mean, yeah, you know, especially you, after two weeks ago. Yeah, right. I mean, you know, Avatar, perfect example. I mean, so much rich, interesting story that's there. But let's also not forget that, you know, in a lot of cartoons that we had for Ren and Stimpy, Ren and Stimpy falls kind of in line with this where it's weird, slapstick and horny, you know, but at the same time, you know, I, I'm not I'm not coming down and I'm not criticizing Ren and Stimpy in a harsh fashion. And I think it's because I watched Ren and Stimpy because it has a special place in my heart and nostalgia associated with it. I, I, I miss this cartoon, you know, for better or for worse. And so right. for me, it doesn't resonate in that same fashion, but I can see a lot of parallels with that. But just to kind of go back and say, you know, Avatar had a ton of story. Doug had story and character progression. Even Rugrats was non sequitur, but there's still sometimes were overarching stories right. uh, and themes that they had that were interesting as well. And there was a lot up. of heart. Yeah, and then they growed up. Uh, so we've got we've got a precedent where Nicktoons can do a great job with storytelling, and these Nicktoons can have really rich, complicated, interesting stories. But at the same time, they can also have weird non sequitur crap too, and I'm also okay with that. And I would I, like another good. I was okay with the premise for this show. It makes no sense, but I'm like, okay, it's a Nicktoon. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to make sense. That's fine for like a hook that you need. Like these three cats who lived in a house with apparently like a rich owner. The owner passes away. Fun premise <laughs> for a kids show, but leaves you know all the riches and the house and the butler to these cats, which I think right. was probably pulled from the headlines at the time. There's probably a crazy rich old lady. Or, uh, like, she's either crazy rich or just crazy or crazy old. Who knows? But she passes away and leaves everything to her cats. I'm sure somebody was just like, nailed it, Nicktoon. Which is fine. (laughs) But I absolutely hate this theme song. Okay. Absolutely hate this theme song. Can I ask why you hated the theme song? It felt like, first of all, it's not not catchy. It's not a very good theme song in general. Um, It very barely gets the point across of what this is supposed to be it doesn't do a great job of introducing the characters themselves the whole thing starts out with a bowl of newts just singing cat scratch and you're like oh are we following new no we're not following newts okay on to the next thing i guess and then it introduces the that sort of cat characters whatever they're supposed to be sock puppets shadow demons whatever but it looks like it took the worst parts of things like two stupid dogs 
Angry Beavers, Invader Zim. It looks like it took the parts that didn't work for me and mushed them all together into a theme song and intro and then just spat it out. I absolutely hated this. I'm glad I only had listened to it twice. <laughs> I really uh, did not like it at all. Can I, you know, we, we, we've we talked about it and we've said the word cat scratch mm-hmm. so many times, mm-hmm. obviously being the title of the show. Sure. And I know that you're kind of talking about sort of the negative things. I wanted to ask, do you actually know what cat scratch is? I only know because of Ted Nugent. I got that cat scratch <laughs> fever. Yeah. So cat or cat scratch fever uh, was <laughs> was a... Uh, was uh, the third studio album uh, that Ted Nugent had that yeah. came out in 1977. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It, it was not the... a good cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> also, Ted Nugent, maybe not the best role model not sometimes the best. for people. Not the greatest. <laughs> but that's okay. But there actually is something called uh, CSD, cat scratch disease. Sure. It's an infectious disease that's from a, a scratch or a bite of a cat. Yeah. Uh, it's basically like swollen lymph nodes that you have from a cat biting you. If you get bit by like a cat, whether it's in your Don't house you or outside, Don't you become a cat? You become a cat and you <laughs> have to star in a for. movie with Taylor Swift. Oh, jeez. Uh, you should go to the hospital. Scratches, whatever. Keep an eye on it. Usually just running cold water over it. Keep it depending on how like allergic, quote unquote, you get to it. If you get bit, though... That could be bad, so you go to the hospital. Like, yeah. like break the skin, draw blood. That's what I'm talking about. Like, sure, that's bad. So, naming a kid's cartoon after like an injury that scarred <laughs> Sean. For people who have never seen Sean, he still has like a three inch wide gash that just runs right across his entire face. That's why it's, I wear this Phantom of the Opera mask all yeah. the time, Dave. I'm very sensitive about it. I wish you hadn't brought it that's up. That's why we do an audio podcast. <laughs> yeah. And if Sean sounds muffled sometimes. It's because he was born in darkness. Oh no! Yeah. Don't let's. We don't need to bane this. At I am all looking for any, way, any excuse to not talk about cat scratch. Oh right uh, really? I didn't. Even, we didn't even get to the specific episodes. I, I know. I know. I know. Do so, you have any LOLs though? In general, uh, I do. I have some. I have some, but they're more episode specific. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my, the only ones I have are like uh, again going back to the theme song. Like I just want to follow these newts around. Like I wanted to know more <laughs> about the newts. I was like, oh, we're okay. We're singing newts in a bowl. Like, what are they up to? And later on, they make fart noises with their armpits. I'm like, okay, I'll follow these yeah. newts. I'll watch a newt spinoff. It was very weird to see sort of the newt focus in this. Yeah. And and I guess it plays into something that's a part of the the Waffles character. Mm-hmm. He evidently speaks newt. He, uh, Nuchigiz is the, the language that he quote unquote speaks to newts to do all of this. It I yeah me Dave is because cringing. it's because it feels like it's pulled from something else. Like it feels like something I've seen before and they just repackaged it into like terrible cat shaped creatures. It feels like something from like Ed Ed and Eddie like that like Double D would have done or something like that. It just feels like something I've seen before and it was just like I don't like it because I've already seen it and I want something new, Nicktoons. Grit yeah. my teeth. Also why is one of these cats Scottish? I was fine with that actually. Yeah, it's actually very laugh. weird that that cat has a Scottish uh, Gordon. We're talking about Gordon. Yeah, it's Kevin McDonald, uh, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, that's Robert Paulson. Oh, that was Robert Paulson. That's Robert Paulson. Oh, weird. I had them all mixed up. Yeah, that's Robert Paulson because uh, you have Waffles as Kevin McDonald and you have Mister Blick, who is voiced by Wayne Knight. Right. And it is interesting because they talk about the fact that he acts and has a uh, he has a Scottish accent. Uh, and you know a stereotypical Scottish accent, um, but he actually is not Scottish in any way, shape, or form. And is he a it, Scottish it, uh, a Scottish fold? Is that what he's I, supposed to be? I, because that's the type of cat, a Scottish fold. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm, I'm sure that that's probably what they had packaged into this. I am sure but... in the five minutes that they were just like, let's create this show. What are the characters? Oh, I had a cat that was a Scottish fold. Nailed it. Gordon Scottish. Next. Oh. Uh, yeah. My cat was like a little black devil. Perfect. Next. His name's Mr. Yep. Blick. Ugh. <laughs> wow. Okay. We are going down, we're going down a real hate I, rabbit hole. I'm, with I'm us. trying not to, but <laughs> I know, I know. I'm also sick. So we, the, the highest ranked IMDb episode, as we've mentioned, is what we watched uh, for the show. And it's broken, as David mentioned, into two separate segments, which is Catilda mm-hmm. and the Secret Door. Right. And so, uh, Dave, I know that you've kind of broken sort of a lot of this uh, down into interestingly enough, like what you did and didn't like for each of these episodes. So let's start with Catilda. Yeah. Uh, what What did you like? Yeah. Again, like I like that these cats were. I like the premise. I like that the cats were like just chilling in this giant like mansion, and then they had a human butler who was like working for them. And then surprise, 
in the neighborhood, they get a new neighbor. So that's kind of revealed over the course of uh, the first half of this half of an episode. Uh, and I, I was like, okay, that's an interesting twist. It's not just, they've, they've tried to connect it to like something in their world. It wasn't just a random character who dropped in. They're like, oh, it's your new neighbor. I thought that was cool. Um, later on in the episode, we get this, uh, essentially the premise of this one is Catilda, this kind of like femme fatale cat, uh, comes up to the trio and is asking for help to defeat a monster. And then faints and we'll get into all that. But when we actually do get to see the monster, I actually really like the design of what's revealed to be a construction vehicle. And at first it's just kind of dormant, so it's not really active, it's not really interesting, it's not really anything. But then they right. activate it, and it looks like it really comes to life like an actual monster would. And I thought that sequence and that design was really, really, really well done. Very imaginative. It had the most life of literally anything else in the show. Uh, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Yeah. I, I was actually not you in love like with the monster truck wow. because it reminded me of the movie actually called Monster Truck, oh, where there's a monster bad. inside of a truck. Yeah. And that's just me. I don't think I don't think it's a bad design. I think actually Dave brings up a lot of good points about why it is a fun, imaginative design. I just had the preconceived notion of another IP that I did not really like Fair. at all uh, that was associated with it. So watching it again, kind of to your point, it felt like stuff that I've seen that has just been repackaged. I know if you were to go back and you know check me in terms of timeline, clearly this came out before the movie Monster Truck, which sure. was you know probably in the the you know, sometime between, I don't know. It's only about five cares? years ago. Not who, even, yeah. yeah. Who cares when it came out? It like, it's not Cat good. Scratch came out before and then the movie monster truck came out after. That, so is, for the, me, that is the timeline we are currently living in. Yeah, the Cat exactly. Scratch monster truck timeline. Oh, please. No. So for me, it was one of those things where I was like, ah, eh, I'm not, I'm not loving, I'm not loving that, Interesting. you know, but you, you bring up, you bring up some good points about this. What, what were some things that you didn't like about the the segment Catilda? The tropey stuff. I mean, they played with yeah. it a little bit, but the lady cat in distress who multiple times in this episode gets like knocked out, so they have to like take her somewhere to let her like rest and recover and she falls into the to Blick's arms each time and I was just like, "Oh, okay." Like I liked when she came back and was like revealed to be their neighbor and she was kind of like fiery and was like ready for like to, to like go out and fight stuff and like kind of get dirty and like just go have some have some fun like fantastical adventures i like that but the fact that they bookended it with this really tropey kind of like damsel in distress stuff yeah, yeah. i didn't like that yeah it, it was weird the 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 idea of like her wanting to go on this adventure and then prodding them along to go on an adventure and then they they join her and they they do these things but like they're just creepy Especially Blake, felt, yeah, yeah. Especially Blake, like felt creepy about this. Especially when he gets chided by Catilda about, you know, you like me, like why, you know, why don't you just say you like me? And he's given every opportunity to kind of talk about what his feelings are and say that he's into her. But for some reason, I guess the choice that they had in the writers' room, which came down into the actual animation of his, was like let's play shy and coy, which never registers or is never a good <laughs> choice in terms of what you're doing. Uh, for something that's an animated sense like and he tries to just ham this up and and it, it gets creepy and weird about how Super he tries to creepy about how he tries to distance himself from somebody that he's very very clearly into right uh i just i just didn't love that i, well, I it even, just it made me uncomfortable and even when she has to kind of like save him with the help of the other two and then she's the one that gets knocked out again after everything's yeah. like taken care of and falls so many into his cat arms. concussions there's a lot of cat concussions but she keeps cushions. falling into his arms, and he does this thing where he like looks at the camera like, yeah. And it's not good. It's not good when it irises out, and you're just like, I don't know what happens after that, but it can't be good. Yeah. Can't very, be good, gang. It's very weird to get that sudden iris, and you're just like, huh. Just holding an unconscious cat lady in your arms. That, Especially because that, that's how you're ending this adventure. Right you know montage like this episode walk, walk through that conversation like okay she joins the group they fight the monster everybody's okay and safe at the end how do we how do we put a button on it uh oh, yeah. knock the lady out and, cat cushion yeah. cat cushion cat and cushion then three. swoop her up God. like was no swoop was there not a, a creepy woman arm in the room grab. hinden walsh were you not in the room to be like maybe we don't do that yeah have like have blick get knocked out and then she catches him like whatever that's yeah. funny that actually would have been fine. But this was 2007 or whatever, so who knows. Right. Um, some other minor stuff. I didn't really like, uh, think back to like, I don't know, the 50s or whenever animation first <laughs> began, decades before that. Anytime that a group of cats get into like a fight, 
you know exactly what that animation looks like. It's this little, like, dust devil cloud ball of just just cat sounds and, like, claws and, and tails and ears sticking out everywhere and just, like, this cloud of nonsense every time there's a cat fight. I get that they were paying homage to that kind of, like, very classic cat fight sort of trope. It just irritated me. I'm like, this. It's it's been 70 years. Do something different. Yeah. <laughs> Do something interesting. It's fine. It just bothered me for some reason very minor but it bothered me yeah i'll say i'll say a good point about this you know is that a lot of the a lot of the humor in this especially in katilda is very slapstick like there's a yeah. lot of stuff that's in there and to the to the point you know to reference another cartoon a lot of tom and jerry stuff going on exactly. there's like a lot of slapstick like slapstick tom and jerry crap that's going on which is super fun but for some reason you know when i look at tom i'm like yeah that's a cat when I look at Jerry, I'm like, that's a mouse. And I look I at Spike, I'm having... like, yeah, that's a dog right there. <laughs> and I look at Blick, and I'm just like, oh, that's Lucy from Enchanted exactly. on Netflix. And exactly. You're just like, oh, no, he's not? Oh, he's not a little demon kid? Uh, huh. Wait, Waffle's not an animated sock brought to life? Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. It looked like a gym sock. But yeah, it's like... Gordon, Gordon's not a patchwork quilt? <laughs> he basically like, well, what a... the heck? He looks like an ugly doll. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, it's just uh, that kind of stuff, even the slapstick stuff, where for it worked to an extent in like Angry Beavers. It worked to an extent in Ren and Stimpy because it was so stylized and over the top. Right. This just felt generic. So like if you're gonna do it and do it well, have some style to it. Have you know, Ed Ed and Eddie had style. Whenever they did slapstick stuff, they would really exaggerate like the camera angles would be like way over here and they're you know, right. their faces or arms or whatever would bend like wildly out of proportion like you're watching through like a fisheye lens or something. And it's like, I still remember those. I just watched this today and I can't even remember like specifics of what they did. Because it wasn't new, it wasn't fresh, it wasn't interesting. It was just rehashing of stuff that we've seen for decades. Yeah. Uh, any any LOLs that you had for Catilda? Uh, one more bad, the one-liners. I mean, if we're, oh, we're going to talk the scripting, too, the one-liners are pretty bad. There's one where Blick says, I'm going to end up as shavings at the bottom of a hamster cage. What? Hilarious. Oof. Yeah. Uh, the LOL for this one, the, when they're out, I, I don't remember what they're doing. I think they're looking for Catilda after she, like, flees for whatever reason. I think there's, like, a bear or some kind of monster that uh, swallows uh, two of the cats whole. So we get right. a shot inside the bear's stomach of both of the cats just like sitting in his stomach and it's like green and there's like stomach acid like boiling yeah. in the background. That was pretty funny because it was different. Yeah. They did yeah. something different. They shifted the perspective. They did something that was like abstract and completely ridiculous. That was fine. Right. How about no. you? Uh, I, I'm be honest with you. This. <laughs> did I, you laugh? Like that's a good I, metric for LOLs. Did you actually laugh at anything? No, I yeah. laughed more. I laughed more at the secret door. I okay, thought yeah. the secret door had a lot more moments for I me. Catilda, Catilda was very fast paced. It was very weird and kind of a little bit off putting for me. Yeah. Uh, I, I like the character Catilda, and in fact, I could. I'd love to watch more of her. I don't understand why the weird love relationship back and forth between her and Mister Blick. She was I say fine that as out like loud, an extra and I sound character. like a freaking crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But I'm with you. Uh, but. We're here. We're here together so, to get through this. Yeah. So the second half of our episode yeah. was The Secret Door. And I have to say, I thought that this was, it felt like night and day for me. Because okay. a lot of the a lot of the interesting or imaginative things that I found to be really great about this cartoon were instilled in The Secret Door. And I, I liked watching that. So that was, that was fun for me. There was a lot of imagination with the idea of we have uh, Gordon and Mr. Blick uh, finding a door in this house, in this mansion that they've been willed that I, I don't think that they've ever noticed before. And so they, they open the secret door and they're like sucked right into this magical world and land. And there's a lot of cool stuff that's there. Yeah. So I really liked that. And there were a lot of characters. Again, it felt like in some cases I might be watching things that I've, I've seen in other cartoons, but it was introduced and packaged in a way that i thought was fun i thought was creative i enjoyed it like dragon rider yeah I, the dragon rider was very simple but he was kind of menacing and kind of cool i liked how he functioned uh you know it, it, it was it was interesting yeah. i was a big fan of that we're on the same page like this was much more imaginative than the first one the first one was rote predictable boring the second one 
it at least had some imagination. Like, you know, oh, there's a, a doorway to another dimension that's like bonkers and zany and we don't understand the rules of it and where has this been this whole time and what can we do while we're here? Also, how can we how can we get the cartoon to live in this world yeah. to enjoy that thing that they've created inside the secret door? Which they didn't do, because that could be a bad. But yeah, I did like that. They had like a little secret pocket dimension in there that apparently like Waffle has just been like wandering into for a couple of weeks at, <laughs> at minimum or a couple of months. He just like wanders in and hangs out with small bear knights. Um, and I also like Dragon Rider because it, again, stylistically and from a visual like animation uh, point of view. It was different from everything else around it. Dragon Rider, look, he, he literally shows up like a black knight, all in black armor, astride a dragon, and he's up in the up in the sky, and he's just like, I am Dragon Rider. And I'm like, okay, you look like a villain from like a throwback 80s cartoon. That's cool. It's something different. It's something that contrasts with the rest of this world and with the tone of the show that we knew so far. I was like, that's cool. You're doing something interesting there. Um, and then the last thing that I really liked from it was uh, Waffle essentially decides by episode's end that he would rather make fart noises with his newt friends than be the king of this pocket universe, which I thought was uh, a nice way to kind of like keep him humble and keep him kind of like relatable to kids, sort of. Yeah. That was cute. Uh, it was 50-50 for me, yeah. good versus bad with that, because again, as we kind of talked about the the iris fade that they have at the end of that little uh, newt. Katilda... Yeah, it's just they they iris newt z- fart. zoom in on a newt fart and then they pinhole it and you're like, uh, I mean what? It, I it, would so, watch a Nicktoon called Newt Farts though. Newt farts? I'd watch Newt Farts. Coming to Nicktoons, Newt Farts. Twenty twenty one. Twenty twenty one. Let's get that into production right now. Sure. You got procreate. Wait. Let's get to work. Yeah. Newt farts. So what? didn't you like Good Dave God. about the secret door uh, one specific thing they went back to the creepy stuff again so I mean they again it's kind of like a classic wolf whistle thing where there's like they see a waterfall and there's like a silhouette of like a naked lady behind the waterfall which, Go on. which why you know Jellicle cat or not I don't know why you'd be like super horned up for a naked lady when you're a cat but then it just turns out to be waffle anyway. Like that was funny. But the fact that they need to like horn this uh, this cartoon up, I just I didn't get it. There were a lot of just tonal things that didn't work for me. Um, and then we get more of Bilk's monologues. And at this point is where I started to like check out. I kept checking yep. my watch. Like, oh, why are we still here? My show note literally says, "Oh God, how long can this go on?" <laughs> so that's not a specific criticism. I was just like, I was done at that point. <laughs> it's also very hard because when Blick was going to monologue, like he announced that he is going to monologue there's a lot I, of stretches for time i like. i did not need all of that monologuing especially because we're in an area where we're having so much fun there there's interesting things that they're pulling in and they they've literally created a world where there are weird rules where you know i'm, I'm dipping into some of the lols for this you know uh, gordon and mr blick are put inside of a cage and it turns out that the the bars that are on there are black licorice it was so silly it was so weird uh we start out this episode where Gordon is in the process of trying to train Bacon to walk into his mouth, and and I'm honestly I've had that dream as well. Sure. Why isn't that a thing? You've Why had that can't reality. We get there? Yeah, you've tried. I've tried. Yeah, and so he's in the process of doing this. He's trying to put pants on Bacon. It's very interesting and abstract, but I'm, I'm kind of fun with it. Then we transition over into this really fun secret door world where you know suddenly. We have these tiny little bear knights. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, huh, bear knights, but make them smaller. Yeah, it makes them three times as more adorable as what yeah. you think they are. They're super, They're super cute, cute, but also terrifying. Yeah. Yes. And I didn't think I needed tiny bear knights until I was shown what a I tiny little bear knight. I didn't know that I I, it was an option. Yeah, I had no idea right. it was an option. So that's the thing. It's like this has imagination in parts, just not throughout the whole series, apparently. Yeah. But like even when they walked into this uh, this this world and they started like messing with the plants, I really like that. I think it's Gordon goes up to one and he sticks his head in like this plant tube, and every time he pulls his head out, he's got a different hat on. Yeah. And one of them was a was a slice of pizza under a bubble dome. Yeah. Like that's cool. You got a pizza dome on your head. Like that's fun. I yeah. like that. I'm 36 and I like that. A six year old's probably gonna like that. Right. And then there, and then Blick walked into one. And he just started eating clocks off of a plant and it <laughs> turned him into a baby Blick. It was super yeah. cute. I was like more was... like that, please. Yeah. We we we've talked a little bit about this uh, this imposing force 
uh, that we that we have in this episode, this dragon rider. Mm-hmm. And he he said something at one point in his very short, succinct speech, which is like, <laughs> fight me in the graveyard of bones. And I don't know why I laughed other than to recognize the fact that every graveyard is a graveyard of bones. That's kind of the point behind a graveyard. It's redundant, but it was it was so silly to me that I just kind of went, <clears throat> OK, graveyard. there was a there was a recent drill tweet where he said something to the effect of. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings gave me nothing but bones instead of chicken. If I wanted to eat bones, I would go to my graveyard. <laughs> Send tweet. What? I don't know. He must have been uh, watching Cat Scratch, I guess. Oh, boy. But uh, speaking, of, speaking of Dragon Rider, I like the way that it, they kind of ended this conflict with him. Because he's, he's like an imposing 80s villain. Like, he's, he's kind of scary in the context of this world. Yeah. But the way that they <laughs> defeat him is Waffle just ends up like on his helmet just like trying to eat it like it's another piece of black licorice and ends up like <laughs> knocking him to the ground and then we get a reveal that the dragon rider is who uh it turns out it's actually the butler the right. butler in this case did it he done did it he done did it but i don't blame him because he's trying to get away from the shadow demon the ugly doll and the athletic sock <laughs> that's come to life he did call him <laughs> philistine felines which i liked i like that was a pretty funny line and that was fine but it's like uh, those little moments Throughout this second half of the episode, I don't know if they were enough to save it for me. Yeah, it's interesting. Any anything else from the secret door segment that you you found funny? Lock that door and throw away the key. There we go, closing <laughs> it down. <laughs> oh, I'm not the only one out there who has opinions. Yeah. Well, we obviously have our opinion, and we're gonna get to our recommendation or or not in a moment but hey guess what turns out you listening right now yeah you you happen to have opinions about this show and we have taken a look and we have scoured imdb and we found a couple we found some good and we found some bad so we're going to turn those over again to longtime listener in front of the show bobby anthem for this week's love it or hate it bobby take it away our love it is titled black girl agrees really great show by caramel hyena on october 2nd 2005 She gives a spoiler warning and says, Cat Scratch is a wonderfully humorous show that our times need. With most animated shows gearing toward tweens or anime fanatics, this would be a cure for the craving of the simpler cartoons. The show is about three cat brothers, Blick, Waffle, and Gordon, inheriting a mansion that their previous owner had. The episodes pretty much pick up, but they're very random, meaning you won't have to worry about missing one episode and losing touch. The show was created by Doug Tenapel, who was the creator of the Earthworm Jim series. So if you see the show on, then give it a try. You might like it. I hope one day it becomes popular like SpongeBob. I hate that show. Big Gordon fan. And our Hate It is titled Pathetic, Annoying, and Boring by Ian1211 on December 16th, 2006. Ian wrote, We don't have this on television in England, but I walked it over the internet on YouTube. It's dumb, immature, and boring. The story is about three cats who inherit a house and lots of money off their dead old lady master. They are argumentative and keep on disagreeing on what they want to spend their money on. Boring. The animation is dreadful. The main characters are meant to be cats, right? But they don't look nothing like cats. Just weird animal monster looking creatures with big mouths, pointed teeth, and bulgy eyes. The human and other animal characters were also drawn real ugly. The theme song is terrible and irritating. This is a total waste of money and a complete and utter waste of your time and feel glad that Britain don't have to tolerate this crap. Oh yeah, if you have digital, you have to, but I don't, so it's not my problem. Loser. Two out of ten, and is very lucky to get that because I've given other shows worse. Thank you, Bobby, so much for doing our uh, our love it or hate it. We are now going to get into our recommendations. As a reminder, uh, we can recommend something, and we can tell you why we think that this would be a good use of your time. We can also not recommend something. And we can tell you why we think you should spend your time elsewhere with another cartoon. And if we don't recommend something, we can go one step further and we can give a cartoon the dip. The dip is the dip from Who Framed Roger Rabbit. So we're dunking this cartoon and we would remove it from the annals of cartoon history, no longer to be talked about or referenced on this show ever again. Uh, there are notable cartoons that we have dipped throughout the, the last couple of years <laughs> we since creating may, this mechanic. We may have a look back, a retrospective dip revisit this year. 
Ugh, That's something why? I'd like to give it another chance. Maybe do a listener vote and see if they actually want to salvage any of these horrible cartoons. Jeez Louise. All right. Well, we're going to get into how we feel about Cat Scratch. So, Dave, for our new or for New Year's Nicktoons, Cat Scratch, how do you feel? Dip it. Wow. Really? Right out of the gate. I talked about this a couple of weeks ago that if I'm on the fence about something, I won't dip it because that tells me that there's something that's making me pause to be like, there's something worthwhile here, whether it's a canon connection, whether they're doing something interesting, whether there are people involved who are like, they haven't done anything else, or this was their first, or this was their best, or whatever. This thing is just, it's not worth watching. It's not different enough. It's not unique enough. It doesn't bring anything new. It's basically just like a shoddier version of, of Tom and Jerry or any of the other cartoons we read. Go watch literally any of the other cartoons we referenced. I almost would say go watch Cats the movie, but don't do that either. It's yeah, just, don't. there was nothing about this that made me want to watch one more second of it. So I'd like to spare people out there the same. Dip it. I would like to spare Dip people <laughs> the pain of watching this as well, but I am going to just not recommend it. I'm not okay. going to dip it. That's fair. Uh, I think that you can spend your time better as we've referenced all these other cartoons. I just, you know, I think that there is some interesting and imaginative and some some great people working in the creative team and the voice team, but having all those elements doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to come together and produce a good cartoon. And I think that this is one of those instances where it does not. I think that there's definitely some interesting imaginative stuff that's in here. Uh, and based off of, again, our snap review of just watching one episode, uh, there was just simply nothing about this that made me want to continue and watch a second episode from I'm this. I'm kind of mad and getting madder that this show still exists. Just, wow. <laughs> well, yeah. you've dipped it. I mean, you've dipped it in your brain. So yeah, it's... but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've had two shows in recent months that uh, the ladle was passed over them drip and dip on them but didn't quite get dipped so they're, yeah. they're pretty close we'll keep them as honorable dip mentions uh, <laughs> in, our, in our retrospective oh man well that is it for cat scratch at this point dave now needs to probably go to the doctor and get that bite on his hand checked out uh not looking real good it's been I don't bleeding know what for... color this is anymore it was black and it's gone like void yikes oh man over the course of this hour uh that's not even a bandage you just spent wonder... I wonder if that had anything to do with my rating and recommendation for the show. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, as always, we want to give a big thanks to our friend Bobby Anthem. You heard him on this episode. You can also check him out on his paranormal podcast, Inhuman Experience, with his co-host Bobby Blades. You can find them on Twitter at IEXP underscore podcast. And Bobby also has a solo show that is in the same stream as Inhuman Experience. So go find Inhuman Experience and you get In Search of My Lost Soul for free. It's all there. Don't worry about it. I made it real simple. So uh, check that out. I have listened to In Search of My Lost Soul. I love this show. It's a great listen. Uh, so please go and support Bobby. Check this out. Dave, what do you got going on, buddy? Same old stuff, bud. After I get this cat scratch taken care of, uh, you can still <laughs> find me, assuming I survive, over at Collider.com. You can also check me out on Twitter at Dr. Claw MD, which is kind of ironic this week <laughs> uh and if you're interested in checking out amc's new uh, breaking bad marathon as well as the breaking bad movie that's going to be coming to amc for the first time and uh the season five premiere of better call saul we are not promoted uh, by any of them sponsored by any of them but you can check out my book the science of breaking bad as you watch that marathon and get caught up over the next couple of weeks how about you bud right. what's going on with you Oh, man. As always, I do live improv comedy with a group in Washington, D.C. that's called Knox. You can find tickets and times witdc.org. And as always, I'm on Twitter and Instagram at Sean Paul Ellis. Please, 2020, maybe it's the year I got off social media. Who knows? Probably not, gang. I have a problem, and I don't want to see what my screen time reports are on my iPhone, because guess what? I know they're not going to be good. I'm going to dip your social media accounts. I'll do it for you. We're going to have <laughs> <I'm> a... <laughs> I did I did have a friend that said that they were having a hard time and that they wanted to get rid of their Facebook app on their phone. Did you and have so an I intervention? De- I, yeah. I deleted it from their phone. It was very satisfying. Nice for everybody yeah. involved, I'm sure. Felt great. Facebook Felt great. is kind of the worst. Get off yeah. Facebook, everyone. Let me know if you want me to come over and delete apps on your phone. We'll I'm dip it. wonderful at it. We'll dip it. <laughs> really good. We're going to start an app just called The Dip, and all you have to do is drag whatever apps you don't want anymore, drag it into The Dip, gone forever. 
Oh, so like any computer's trash can that's down but on I their mean, screen? But if people want to give us a dollar for every time they download the dip, that's <laughs> totally fine. I'll do the exact same thing. I like that you've monetized the dip already. Have to. Perfect. I need to put food on the table and pay for this exorbitant doctor's bill. Exactly. Well, hey, if you want to support us and help us with Dave's doctor bill, you can tell a friend about this show. You can even review us on Apple iTunes. Uh, we have no idea if it helps or whatever. Everybody else says it. Help us out. I don't know. As you've probably heard in the pre-show ramblings, we've got some notes and we've got some opinions about that as well. <laughs> Who knows? Don't like us? Give us a one-star review. Absolutely love us? Give us a five-star. If you're like middle of the road, <laughs> go ahead. Give us a three-star. That's why you've got multiple stars. You're an adult. You'll figure it out. I have trust and faith in you. Don't worry. Want to communicate with us? You can slide into our DMs on Twitter at Morning Tunes. Just remember, that's morning with a U. You can check us out on Instagram and Facebook at Saturday Morning Cartoons. Drop us an old-fashioned email, SaturdayMorningCartoons at gmail.com. We might not reply to every single one of them, but we do read them, so we greatly appreciate it. You can find all these links and more that I've mentioned on our link tree. What the heck is a link tree? It's just the link in the bio of all of our social media sites that look like it says the word link tree. Don't worry. It just opens up a button in a menu for you to find a whole bunch of crap. Because you can always listen to us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere. Find podcasts are sold. Oh, thank you guys so much. Are we doing another New Year's Nicktoons or are we I doing something else after want this? To. We can. You know what? We can. We then you know what? Let's go and maybe get into some of our listener suggestions. That's probably a really good idea. Because if know. it all goes wrong, we have someone to blame other than ourselves. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Not going to do that. But at the same time, we do have a bunch of listener recommendations and we want to get in and we want to honor those for 2020. So buckle up, everybody. Listener recommendations coming next week. See you then. See you then. Thanks for listening. Woo. Hey, everybody. Thanks a lot for listening to Saturday Morning Cartoons. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have to transform and roll out. <laughs>